any medical disorders that have overlapping features or can be easily confused are a favorite for examiners. I wonder why. But anyways, in this section, we'll be focusing on IJ nephropathy, Henoch-Schönlein line purpura, and post-strep glomerulonephritis. We'll discuss high-yield ways that these are commonly tested on your internal medicine shelf, your surgery shelf, your family medicine shelf, even your pediatric shelf, and of course, on your step 2 exam as well. So to emphasize these points, we'll also be doing questions to test your knowledge and to really highlight some high yield points so let's begin a 27 year old male presents with gross hematuria for two days he had a throat infection 10 days ago immunofluorescence shows deposits of igg igm and c3 which factor would most likely contribute to poor prognosis in this patient a. Prior upper respiratory infection B. Low C3 C. Delayed steroid treatment or D. H. So first we have to know what this patient has and he has post-trip glomerulonephritis and the factor that would contribute most to a poor prognosis is D. H. We talk about this more in depth as we continue with this video. IgA nephropathy so this is the most common cause of nephropathy in adults it most commonly affects males in their 20s or 30s it is often triggered by mucosal infections of the upper respiratory tract or the gi tract within five days of developing these mucosal infections these patients can then present with hematuria lung pain or hypertension so what might lab findings of a patient with ig nephropathy reveal well urinalysis may show hematuria or proteinuria and labs may reveal an elevated serum iga we can manage these patients by treating their proteinuria and their hypertension by giving them ace inhibitors or ARBs. However, if the patient is experiencing severe IgA nephropathy, then we will give them high dose glucocorticoids. So let's summarize everything that we've learned about IgA nephropathy. So IgA nephropathy commonly affects adults, especially males in their 20s and 30s. It's often preceded by mucosal infections of the GI or upper respiratory tract. And within five days of developing these mucosal symptoms, they may have hematuria, flank pain, and hypertension. To manage these patients, we give them antihypertensives to manage their hypertension, of course, and proteinuria. If they are experiencing severe IgG nephropathy, then we may give them high-dose glucocorticoids. So one down, two more to go. Post-strep glomerulonephritis is next. So this is caused by nephrotogenic strains of streptococci. So these patients usually have a prior infection due to apharyngitis or impetigo. Within one to four weeks of being infected with the nephrotogenic strain of streptococci, patients may develop symptoms such as hematuria, cola colored urine, hypertension, edema, or even oliguria. It's very important to note that 50% of these patients may be asymptomatic. So how can we diagnose these patients? Well, we can do urinalysis, which may reveal hematuria, red blood cell casts, and proteinuria. Labs may also reveal an elevated antistreptolysin O and an elevated anti DNA B titer and a decreased or low complement level. It's also very high yield to note that post strep glomerulonephritis most commonly affects children. So, how can we manage these patients? 
well, it's mainly with supportive care. So they can manage their edema with a low sodium, low protein diet, or with loop diuretics. Also, they can manage their hypertension and hematuria with ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Post-strep glomerulonephritis usually resolves within eight weeks. Children have a very good prognosis for recovery. However, 50% of adults can develop renal failure and have a worse prognosis. So adults have a bad prognosis and children have a good prognosis. So this kind of relates back to the first question that we did. So in summary, post-strep glomerulonephritis most commonly affects children. They are infected with a nephrotogenic strain of streptococci and this leads to an infection called pharyngitis or impetigo. Then within one to four weeks of developing these infections, patients can then go on to develop hematuria, hypertension, and flank pain. These patients are managed with supportive care, such as a low sodium and low protein diet, or managing proteinuria and hypertension with ACE inhibitors and ARBs. We talked about IgA nephropathy and post-strep glomerulonephritis and summarized them. Now we're going to compare them, look at their similarities and how we can distinguish between them. These conditions are preceded by an upper respiratory tract infection and then they both develop hematuria. How can we distinguish between them? Well, we can use time, age, and labs. So let's take a closer look at these factors. Time refers to the amount of time between the initial infection, like a oppository tract infection, until they develop renal symptoms such as hematuria or hypertension. So for IgA nephropathy, these symptoms occur within less than five days. However, for post-strep glomerulonephritis, these symptoms present within one to four weeks. For the ages of these patients, so IgA nephropathy commonly affects adults, especially males in their 20s to 30s, and post-strep glomerulonephritis most commonly affects children that are usually less than 10. So how I remember the timing and the age is I use the A in IgA nephropathy. So A for acute onset of symptoms. So less than five days is kind of acute. Well, not really, but kind of. So that's how I remember the timing for IgA nephropathy. And I use the A again to remember adults. So we can also distinguish between them using labs. In IgA nephropathy, they have normal complement levels. However, in post-strep glomerulonephritis, they have low complement levels. Patients with IgA nephropathy also have an increased serum IgA. However, this is not seen in post-strep glomerulonephritis. Another high yield similarity for IgA nephropathy and post-strep glomerulonephritis are that they are both type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. Recall that in type 3 hypersensitivity reactions, they are immune complex mediated with tissue damage caused by an antigen antibody complex deposition. Now let's move on to question 2. A 24 year old male presents with oliguria for two days. He had a skin infection that required antibiotic treatment two weeks ago. His blood pressure is 150 over 88. Exam shows periorbital edema. What additional findings can be seen in this patient? A. Elevated serum IgA. B. Elevated anti DNA B titer. Or C. IgG autoantibodies. 
This patient has post-strep glomerulonephritis as evidenced by his hypertension, oliguria, and periorbital edema, as well as his skin infection that he had two weeks ago. Option A is referring to IgA nephropathy, so IgA is not the answer. Option C says IgG autoantibodies. This is referring to a type 2 hypersensitive reaction. But as you mentioned before, IgA nephropathy and post glomerulonephritis are type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. So C is definitely not it. You should also note that an example of a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is Good Pastor's disease. So that leaves us with option B, elevated anti-DNA B titer. Recall that patients with post-strep glomerulonephritis have an elevated antistreptolysin O, an elevated anti-DNA B titer, and a low C3. Now let's look at Henoch Shanline Purpura. So we can remember the clinical features of HSP using the letters HSP. H hematuria, S, skin rash, and P, palpable purpura on the buttocks and thighs. There are also other symptoms that we have to remember with the A's, A, abdominal pain, and A, for arthritis. We can also remember the treatment of this using the letters as well, S, supportive care, and P for prednisone if the symptoms are severe. And that kind of rhymed unintentionally. <laughs> but anyways, let's go. So let's take a closer look at IG nephropathy and Hinox Shanline Purpura because both of them involve IgA. And in both of them, the kidneys are affected. However, in HSP, other organs are affected such as the skin, GI system and the joints. And this is why these patients present with symptoms like palpable purpura on the buttocks and thighs, arthralgia or arthritis, and abdominal pain. So as previously mentioned, IgA nephropathy commonly affects adults. However, in HSP, kids are most commonly affected. In IgA nephropathy, the symptoms occur within five days of previous infections, while in HSP, their symptoms develop within one to three weeks. And remember, IgA, A for adult, and A for acute. And let's do our last high yield question. A five-year-old boy presents with a limp. He had a runny nose and cough last week. Exam shows palpable purpura on his thighs. His knees are swollen and warm bilaterally. Urinalysis reveals many red blood cells. What is the most likely cause of his symptoms? A. IgG autoantibodies B. Antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity C. Immune complexes or D. Bacterial infection Everything in this clinical vignette is screaming Henoch Shanline Purpura. So if a patient has a limp, especially in the pediatric population, we should always suspect HSP. Also, this patient had a runny nose and cough last week, as well as a palpable purpura on his thighs. His knees are swollen and warm bilaterally, and the urinalysis findings. So. HSP is also a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Basically, every condition we discussed today are type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. So we have to know what this includes, which is option C, immune complexes. Okay, so for those of you who stuck around until the end of this video, thank you. But as always, if you like this content, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. And to continue learning more, click this video right here.